Hey everybody, Marcus here with the VOD and Tips video. This week, we're going to take a look at how we can display a CSV file in a data grid using Java. So as my project, I have a Maven-based Spring Boot project using Vaadin for displaying stuff in the browser. And for reading the CSV, we're going to use OpenCSV5. All right, so let's create a new project and see how we can do this. All right, so I'm here on start.vaadin.com. And what I want to do is create a new Vaadin flow project. So here, what I want to do first of all is remove one view. So really all we need for this is one view where we can display everything. We'll call this CSV, for instance, and it can have a URL of CSV. All right, and in the settings, what I want to do is use Java 16, Vaadin and flow, and I'm just going to go with the current LTS version of Vaadin 14. All right, so with that, let's go ahead and download the project. And what we get then is a Maven project in a zip file. So I'm going to open up this project in IntelliJ. I'm doing that by dragging and dropping the palm file over the icon, but you could also go into the into the menu here and just open it from here. All right, so as this is opening up here, uh, we can take a little bit of a look at what we have here. So the palm file, uh, if we open it here, you will see uses Java 16 like we configured and Vaadin 14. And it has all the dependencies that we need. So it's based on Spring Boot, comes with some helpers and, and Spring Boot dev tools and, and so on. The one thing we need to add here uh, before we actually launch this is the open CSV library. So that would be the com open CSV library like this. If you're in IntelliJ like I am, you can just start typing the the uh, artifact uh, group ID or name, and it'll suggest uh, which one you could uh, in install. So we need to go ahead and import all the Maven dependencies. And once that's done, let's start the application. So the application that we have is a basic Spring Boot application. So we can start it by running the application class here. So I'm going to go ahead and click Run Application here. And that will start our application. Now, the first time you do this, it will take just a little bit of time because it's downloading all the needed Maven dependencies and also all the needed front end dependencies for displaying that uh, CSV file. And as that's launching, you will see that it launches the browser for us. And once everything is done, we should see a content placeholder here where we can then display our CSV uh, in a data grid. All right, so there are two different ways I want to show you how to load a CSV. One is from the class path. So if we have our CSV somewhere in the project, how we can load that from the class path and display it. And after that, we'll take a look at how we can enable a user to upload their own CSV and display that in the data grid. But let's start with the one from the class path. So I have a CSV file here. Let's see if I can find it. Here we go. So I have some contacts. And what I want to do then is I want to put them here in my resources folder. So I'm going to hold down the option or alt key to uh, move it there or actually to copy it there. You can see that it's not allowing me to do that because the indexing is still going on here. So we'll have to wait for it just a little bit. All right, so the indexing is finally done. So let's try this again. So I'll drag it over to resources. I'll hold down option or uh, alt to copy it here. And we'll just use the same name. So contacts.csv. And what I'll do then is rearrange my windows a little bit so we have an easier time seeing what we're doing. And all right, so that's pretty good. We can collapse that. And what I want to do then is open up this view that we created, the CSV view. And we can find it here in the views package. You can see we have the main layout, which is this top part here with the navigation. And then we have the CSV view that we created. All right, so what I need then 
to display things in a data grid is of course a data grid. So for that I'm going to create a new Wadden grid and that will be of type string array. So in, in this example I'm not parsing a CSV into a specific bean type. Uh, that, that is something that you could do but we'll keep everything very generic here so we can essentially handle any any CSV thrown at us. We'll call this grid and we'll initialize a new grid. Okay, and then we need to add this to our layout. So we'll add the grid here. And then we also need a button for importing. So I'll create a new import button and this will be a new button with the text import from class path like this. And then we'll also add that here. And I'm going to extend from vertical layout instead of uh, the plain div and just remove any, any CSS here just to keep things as simple as possible. Now, when I save, uh, I automatically built my project and what that should do is automatically reload the browser here so we can see we have this kind of empty window where we will have a uh, data grid once we import the CSV and then we have the button here. All right, so the way I'm gonna uh, structure this is that we'll have one method that does the actual CSV parsing and displaying and then we'll have uh, two ways that we can call it. So we can pass in an input stream, either one that we get from reading the file from the class path or by reading uh, the file that was uploaded. So I'll create a new uh, method here. It will be a private void method called read from class path. And here we'll then call the other method which will be display CSV. So we'll call display CSV. So I'll, I'll pretend this method uh, already exists and then I'll call get class. And then from there, I can get the class loader to then get a resource as a stream. And here we need to pass in the name contacts.csv. So that's how we get an input stream. Uh, for this specific CSV file. Now, of course, we don't have this method yet. So we need to use the ID here to create it. And what we created here is a method that takes an input stream and uh, displays it. So we'll need to go in here and actually handle all the CSV reading. Okay, so this is where we use uh, OpenCSV to actually take care of uh, reading the CSV. For that, we need two things. We need a parser and then we need a reader. The parser will kind of instruct OpenCSV how to parse the file and the reader will then actually take care of the reading. So we'll create a parser and we'll do a new CSV, CSV parser builder. And here we can configure that we want to have with separator. In my case, I'm going to use a semicolon as the separator and we're going to build that. So that'll give us a CSV parser. And of course, this takes it in a character, not a string. So I need to uh, use single quotes there. All right, so that gives us a parser. And then we'll have the reader, which will be a new CSV reader builder. This will take in a reader as we can see. So we'll do a new input stream reader and pass in this resource as a stream. And then we'll call uh, with CSV parser, pass in the parser that we have and call build on this again. All right, so now we have a CSV parser and a CSV reader. So that will take care of the actual like plumbing that we need to read this file. So the First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to read the entire file just into one variable, all this and trees, and we'll call reader.readAll. 
And as you can see, this returns a list of string arrays. I'll also say uh, that we need to add exceptions to the method signature or surround with a try catch, which is what we'll do. And we can collapse these if we want. All right, so provided that this worked, we have now a list of strings. And the first thing I want to do is read the first line as headers, because I know the first line in my file contains headers. I'll call this headers, and this will be the first row in our entries, essentially. And then what we need to do is, for each header, go through and create a new column in our data grid. So for that, I'm going to do a for loop. So we'll do headers dot for each, like this, uh, again, using IntelliJ's postfix complete here. So just creating a for loop, looping over uh, the length of the headers with an index. First thing that I'm going to do here is just save the index. So the column index as i. That's because we need an essentially uh, final variable that we can use in a lambda. And for that, the actual column adding, we're going to call grid add column. And what we get is that header row. So we get the full row. And what we need to do then is return the index, the correct column index from there. Then we want to set the header to be equal to headers from that uh, index like this. Okay. And now that we've essentially gone through all the headers, we've created configured new columns for each and how those will map to each row. So for each row, we essentially get the right, uh, right column from there under the right header. And then what we can do is call grid that set items, and then we'll take the entries and we take a sub list starting with one to entries.size. So essentially all of them from there. Okay, so let's take a look at what we have here. So we've created a grid and a button that we display here. Uh, what we need to do then is add a click listener here on the button, which we'll call this read from class path method that we created. Read from class path will get our class loader, get the resource as a stream, and call display CSV with that. Display CSV will configure an open CSV parser, pass that to a uh, reader. And then we're going to use that to read all the lines, extract the headers, configure columns, and then finally set all the data. So now that we click on import from class path, what we should be able to see is all the data that we had. Now we could make this a little bit nicer by capitalizing this. Vaden has a helper built in. Uh, we can use shared util dot uh, camel case to human friendly to take that lowercase uh, or camel case string that we have in our header here and turn that into a more human readable form. So now it looks a little bit nicer. All right. So that's the first way we can read a CSV uh, through the class loader by calling get resources stream. Now, the other thing that I want to show you is how we can allow a user to upload a CSV file from their browser and uh, for us to display that. So again, we'll uh, create two things. We'll need a button upload. And the button upload needs a buffer for it to kind of upload the file to. So we're going to create a buffer, first of all, which will be a new memory buffer. And then we'll create a upload, which will be a new upload, which receives this uh, buffer like this. Then what we do is we take our upload component and we'll add a succeeded listener. So whenever it's done, we will be able to do something here. And that's something that I want to do is I want to call display CSV and I want to get the buffer and I get the input stream from that buffer like that. Now, of course, for that to actually show up, we need to add it here. 
So where I previously only had the import button, I'll create a new horizontal layout to wrap both components. So we'll have the button and the upload now, like this next to each other. So if I save and build this project again, we should be able to see this new upload here. Let's wait for that to finish reloading. There we go. So now we see we have this upload here. And if we now drag our CSV here, you can see that we get all the same data here. So what we did here was create a new upload component with a memory buffer. And then whenever the upload has succeeded, we call the same display CSV with the input stream from there. All right, so there you have it. Two ways to read CSV files using Java with Spring Boot, Vaadin, and OpenCSV. I hope that was useful for you. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments below. If you have ideas for new videos, let me know. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week. Bye.